medications. I think it is safe to say those medications have certain effects on certain people that may be unexpected. But I think the weight of the evidence supported what the jury found, which is that it did not negate his intent in this case. I agree with that. If anything, I suppose arguably it may have helped him develop that intent. But with the actions in this case, so be, being so clearly targeted towards a particular goal, and the steps taken in, in, in pursuit of that goal, there's no escaping, in my view, what the jury found, which is that it was a premeditated uh, attempt to kill Mr. Kraska. Therefore, I find that justice requires the following. With respect to count one, the premeditated attempt to murder, the term will be life with the possibility of parole, plus an additional 25 years to life for intentionally discharging a firearm resulting in great bodily injury, as alleged under 12022.53D of the Penal Code. The great bodily injury allegation under Penal Code section 12022.7A calls for an additional three-year term, but that punishment is barred by section 654. With respect to count two, shooting it out at an occupied vehicle, based on my earlier assessment and my discussion, I, I would select the upper term of seven years. But since I've got this count and on each of the uh, three allegations under count two is barred under 654, those allegations are as follows. The 12022.53D allegation, which carries 25 to life. The 12022.5A allegation, which I would am selecting the middle term of four years. Um, I'm doing that, frankly, to avoid any sort of dual use issues, even though I am barring this under 654. And the 12022.7A, which is a, it would be a three year term, all barred by Penal Code Section 654. Count four, and I'm putting count four before count three because of the specific circumstances of that, of those two crimes. With respect to the criminal threats in count four against Mr. Hibbler, um, and based on these threats being, in my view of the evidence, completely unprovoked, and the fact that the threats went on over a significant period of time, and that they were extremely serious, including the threats to shoot the victim or others in their head, and talking specifically about getting a firearm, I believe the upper term of three years is appropriate. It may seem like piling on, but I uh, believe that I should and I am going to consider these crimes as independent and warranting their own justice. Count three, the criminal threats against Mr. Ms. Ms. Fembris carries an additional consecutive eight months, which is one third the middle term of two years. I've chosen to run counts three and four consecutive to each other and to the indeterminate terms in count one due to them being separate crimes on separate dates, independent of each other and independent of the attempted murder in count one. Therefore, Mr. Montana, it is the judgment and sentence of this court that probation be denied, that you, you be committed to the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation for the term of life with the possibility of parole, plus, plus 25 years to life, plus three years and eight months. You have credit for time served at 50, 561 actual, 84 2933.1 credits for a total of 645 days credit. The following fines and fees are imposed. There's a restitution fine of $10,000, an additional restitution fine of $10,000 will be stayed, a court security fee of $160, an ICNA fee of $120, and a, a CJAF CJ fee of $154. I'm ordering restitution to the victims, Kyle Kraska, Robert Hibbler, and Lydia Fimbres, and an amount to be determined by the court. I'm ordering restitution to the victims compensation program based on the documents provided in the amount of $3,257, subject to future modification by the court. And I'm ordering DNA testing to PC 296. The um, trailing misdemeanor matters People's motion to dismiss those matters? Yes, Your Honor. The motion is granted under D1, D177, I'm not sure, but in any event, they're dismissed in the interest of justice. C, it's cases number C346138 and C345759. Those cases are dismissed. Um, 
Mr. Ackermore, does your client wish to waive his presence for any future restitution review or restitution hearing? I did speak to him about this. He does not want to waive his presence. Okay, so let me just be clear, Mr. Montana, if there ends up being a hearing put on calendar where they, we're going to determine whether or not restitution is to be paid to any of the victims and what the amount of that restitution is, you do have the right to be taken out of prison and brought back here for that. You also have the right to waive your presence and have your attorney, attorney appear on your behalf. You wish to be brought back and not waive your presence? I would rather come back. Okay, then we will, uh, you'll be brought back to any hearing we put on calendar. And before you leave, I got one question too. What's that question? Um, could you tell me, explain how the sentence works? Is it 25 years plus another 25 years? I don't understand. You'll need to talk to your attorney about that. I'm not going to okay. explain it to you. Now. Uh, okay. I am going to, uh, as is my duty, I'm going to advise you of your appeal rights at this time. Thank you, you have the absolute right to appeal from the judgment of this court and impose a sentence on you today. That means that if you wish to appeal, you must file a written notice of your intention to appeal within 60 days from today. That notice must be in writing and signed by you or your attorney. You must specify what, you're, what it is you are appealing from, whether it is the whole judgment or just part of the judgment. If you do appeal, you'll have the right to a complete transcript of the trial court proceedings at no cost to you. And if you appeal and you cannot afford to retain the services of an attorney to represent you on appeal, the appellate court will appoint counsel to represent you. You must keep the appellate court advised at all times of your current address so they can be in touch with you to advise you of your appointed counsel. Unless I'm missing something, I believe that concludes the matter. Your Honor, I do.